Afan. How Hi. are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. Um, so congratulations! Uh, I saw that you passed your BTE exam and you got almost like perfect score, right? So ninety everything and speaking yeah, except 89. speaking eighty nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> Thank but you. it's it's incredible. It's very impressive, and which is why we have decided to ask you to uh, join this interview so that you can share your personal tips. Because sure. as you know, many students are struggling and they really want to know uh, from the best, to learn from the best. Um, sure. Yeah. The first question is, why did you need to do PTE? So, yes, uh, obviously, like many other people, I have migrated to Australia and obviously residency is the ultimate goal till now. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, because of that visa purpose, yeah, PTE is a crucial tool which I need to pass. And yeah. uh, that's why I took that test. Yeah, and you needed 79, right? At least yes, yes. In, in each module. Yes, oh exactly. And, um, so how did you find PTE magic? I wanted to figure out like, where did I do the mistake? And I was just browsing everywhere and I saw your uh, uh, videos and posts on Facebook, which mm. was uh, really impressive. And it mm -hmm. kind of like convinced me. I said, OK, let's take this. Uh, let's check it out. Mm. And then I had a chat with your admin group. And then that's how I found uh, uh, your uh, PT Money International. <laughs> <laughs> so um, no, I, thank you. Thank, thank you for choosing us. Um, and um, can you share, since you got such a like, perfect score, could you yeah. share your preparation journey? How did you study your study plan? Because I know that you're working, so you're yeah. not just staying home, right? You, you do have a job. So how Absolutely. did you prepare for the test? Can you share your tips? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, so like many students or like many working people, I've been working as well. Like a uh, few weeks I've been working like both day and night and few weeks i'll be working like nights so it was very less preparation time for me so basically when i enrolled into your coaching so i was completely reliable on the uh, uh, recorded videos uh, because uh, most of the times i couldn't attend the classes but obviously that's the best part of your coaching uh, center which i found like you provide the recorded uh, classes which helped me a lot obviously most of the students and most of the people which I have seen, like who come from non-English speaking countries like Asia or India, Pakistan, or even from Europe, like Germany or mm -hmm. France, they uh, have a little bit of issues in properly speaking. It's quite natural and quite common because of the native language which we speak. So we struggle with either A, S, L, R, T, D. So mm -hmm. what I used... I use tongue twisters Ooh. every day morning after I wake up, I'll have a tea and then I'll use 30 to 50 tongue twisters every day. Wow. That, that was my habit. And then I'll go for job. Uh, if that day I can make some time to make for my preparation, it's fine. Absolutely fine. Or else the day when I'm doing the preparation. So I'll be doing like a section wise, like, some day maybe listening, some day maybe reading, some day maybe speaking. That's how I did. And then I watched your videos as well on YouTube, like uh, uh, with the mic uh, position and then also practicing in a busy environment, like uh, like noisy environment. Mm. So what I because I live in an apartment and the main road is just near my window. So what I would do, like whenever I'll be practicing uh, speaking, I'll open my window. So there will be a lot of cars going on, honking and people shouting. So I'll take the speaking uh, practice in that way. That helped me a lot. And wow. obviously getting this uh, uh, headphone, it's, it's absolutely necessary because uh, it's not necessary to be brand new. So I got this uh, second hand <laughs> because these days most of the people are working from home. So some way or the other, someone is just throwing out. <laughs> so I took, grabbed one of them. Did you have to wear a mask? In your no, no. So because it's not very severe and critical situation right now in Australia. So like, it's just like, okay, yeah. fine. You are carrying a mask. That's enough. Yeah. So you don't need how, to how wear mask. How did you position your microphone in the exam? Uh, so in the exam, obviously, as per your video, three fingers here and here. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So that that's how I position my mic. And also, one of the trick uh, which I did is like 
which I realized from my first attempt exam. So this time what I did, like I signed up or signed in myself at the first point. So what happens like if I sign in at the first or the last, I don't have two people sitting beside me and just distracting me. So I'll have only one people just beside me. Oh. So that helped me a lot. <laughs> oh, so I'll, true. Yeah. So I'll be at the start of the row. So I have only one person beside me. So not mm -hmm. too many distractions, <laughs> too many oh, noises. That's, that's a really good tip. Yeah. And also, uh, basically on the exam day, what I did is uh, just woke up, had a cup of tea, which is really necessary and uh, because i wanted to get my throat clear and then yeah. i went back to sleep again and yeah. then i <laughs> took the exam so you went back to sleep again what time was your exam so i my exam was at 10 30 and oh, okay. uh, it's like 20 minutes from my house so i yeah. woke up at seven o'clock i got fresh then i had a, a cup of tea nice black tea uh, without milk because I've seen like if I have any coffee or milk, what happens, thick liquid or heavy liquid try to dampen the voice mm -hmm. uh, instead of like thin or lean liquid like tea or warm water or some people if because it's been flu going around. So some people might have a little bit of itchy throat on the day of the exam. So like they can do some gargle, you know, with uh, salt and warm water. Yeah. So. He actually forced me to take the mock test so she could help me out. So when I took the first mock test, uh, maybe I'd like to share the screen with you, if yeah, you allow you, me. You can share it, yeah. First mock test with uh, your platform. Yeah. So as you can see, like I, I did poorly in this repeat sentence because yeah. what happened, like because no. it was my first mock test, I kind of panicked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so which is, which is pretty normal, I know again. because yeah. So what happened, like, uh, I did. I didn't recognize that the repeat sentence was coming that quickly, yeah. and I missed the first question. And yeah. once I missed the first question, I started panicking, and I did poorly in the other ones. No, but That's, still, the, look, the scores look great. Yeah, I tried to make up as much as I could, <laughs> but uh, that's one of the things. Another thing was the summarized spoken test. So mm. again, I panicked here, and then I couldn't take notes, and 6.5 out of 20. Oh, my God. No. So after this one, I uh, had a one-on-one -on -one session with Kay. She made me realize where I need to improve, where I need to uh, improve on my mistakes, what are the mistakes actually I'm doing. And mm. then what I did, like, I actually booked in for Pearson official mock test, mm. and I would like to share. And this is the first mock test I took. So although my listening, reading, speaking improved, but I was still struggling in the writing. As you mm. can see, I just got 79. <laughs> and then what I did, like, uh, this was in the morning. In the afternoon, somewhere around 3 o'clock, I took another uh, mock test from your platform. Yeah. Because I can't check the backside of this mock test, so I took another mock test from your platform. And yeah. then I saw like where I was doing mistake. So I realized I was doing mistake in the SST, summarized spoken test, because I was not taking notes of the actual keywords. Rather, mm -hmm. I was taking the like E's, R, D, all those things, and I was yeah. just messing it up. So oh. I improved that one. And then uh, the final mock test, which I took just before I went to sleep at night. Yeah. That's it. Wow. Okay. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. After this one, I was really confident. And uh, so that's why like uh, on the exam day, I just woke up, did my tongue twisters and went back to sleep again and then yeah. went to went for the exam. Yeah. yeah. And then, and you know, like the thing about mock tests is that like Pearson mock tests are harder than the yeah. real test. And then yeah. our yeah. mock tests are actually yeah. harder than the Pearson mock test. Yes, exactly. And, yeah. And it makes you push yourself harder. And at yep. the same time, the good thing about our mock test is that you can see your answers yep. so that you, yep. you know where you made mistakes. Exactly. But, uh, but you did great. Oh, my gosh. Like phenomenal scores. And in the real test, you, you got much more than this. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. the real test, I think I can show you from here only. Yeah. Uh, wow. So, you know, that the overall score is actually um, it's like just the average of like the enabling skills. So yeah. It's miles but they only look at your your individual scores which is exactly 90, exactly 90, 90. wow yeah <laughs> good job well done thank you
Um, so um, the next question is which part of your exam you found mm. the most challenging? Um, yes. So that's uh, one of the interesting question actually because in the essay what happened like I mostly prepared for the argumentative uh, essays yeah. and in the real exam I got uh, and in the real exam I got problem and solution question. Uh, yeah. So now I was thinking what to do and then what I realized I just simply copy pasted the template yeah. I wrote down the notes first, like the problems and the solutions. And just in the conclusions, I did a little bit tweaks. Like instead of saying like, I support this one, I said like, these are the problems and these are the resolutions. So yeah, solutions. The keywords, yeah. Exactly. And that's it, done. <laughs> and obviously in the reading, fill in the blanks and reading and writing, fill in the blanks, which are very, very crucial, as you have mentioned, and also Kay have mentioned in all your videos or in sessions. So I tried to focus on those ones uh, in the reading and writing, fill in the blanks in few of the questions. I took almost three minutes because I wanted to make sure like I get that absolutely right. Because how did you, how, how did you prepare for that? So what I did like uh, uh, also one of the things which I would like to mention with the Pearson official mock test and the real test, there are two differences. Mm. First of all, in the mock test, what happens like when we ch switch over to the next question, we simply select the next or submit and we just go to the next question. But in the real exam, what happens like once you select the next, a pop-up notification comes. Do you really want to submit yes or no, which takes a few more seconds of your time. So, and mm. it comes for every question, which is pretty annoying. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, obviously we have to deal with that. And second thing is like in the official Pearson mock test, in the reading section, what I've noticed the timer starts from zero. Mm -hmm. So it starts from the front and goes to the end. But in the real test, it starts from the back, like 2959, 2958, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So which which kind of like uh, panic pressure. me again, exactly creating pressure. But yeah, that's what this exam is all about, like dealing the pressure. As I mentioned, like starting the day with tongue twisters and it's not necessary like uh, we have to uh, like watch movies or something like that, English movies for enabling our schools. It's like it should be a kind of fun or entertainment. Like let's say during our work if we are having a 10 minutes break instead of watching a music video in our own native language like let's say indian or vietnamese or whatever it is we can watch some music video in english that also yeah. entertains us as well as we learn some vocabulary or english or how they speak yeah. so that's one of the things if you have to give one tip to the students who are yeah. currently struggling what would yeah. you tell them so my one and only one tip would be this PT exam is a game of doing mm -hmm. smart work, not hard work. It is a game of doing smart work and just holding your nerves. That's mm -hmm. it. There might be mistakes because no one is perfect in this world. We are human beings. There, we, will, we will do mistakes every time. Mm -hmm. I'm still struggling with my speaking. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. it's, a, it's, an English, it's, it's an English test. However, what I want to say is your ability to communicate and exactly. to convey. convey and the it's meaning not the meaning like the other English exams like where only each section uh, gives you the score because here all the sections contributes to each other and they are interlinked. That's why this exam is needs to be tackled in a smarter way, not hard work. Mm -hmm. because right. as i mentioned like uh, during the essay if i just panic and oh i didn't practice the uh, problem and solution template what i'll do then i'll be scoring less marks mm -hmm. it was absolutely uh, lovely to speak to you as well <laughs> yeah. thank you thank you for choosing. i've mostly seen in your videos but this is the first time speaking to you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for watching my videos. Yeah. Please recommend, recommend us to others. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm.